This weekend in the Catholic Church throughout the entire world, it is what we have typically referred to as World Marriage Sunday, a day where the church annually holds up the institution of marriage and again reminds all of her people about how important the institution of marriage is, which is, I think, why Father Bill has the marriage retreat that's going on today. And I think certainly it's important to realize that this day was set a long time ago in the calendar, but given current events, I think it's very appropriate that we be celebrating this this weekend. As Father Bill said, I went to Roncalli High School and I graduated in 1997. While at Roncalli, I played football and track, and I wanted to share a story with you from my football playing days at Roncalli that I would like to then tie into this theme of World Marriage Sunday. When I was a junior, which was 1995 at Roncalli, we had what was probably, or at least arguably, the most talented team at Roncalli ever. Certainly other classes will argue with that, but it's at least in the argument for the most talented class of football players of all time. We would beat teams with our eyes closed. We ran through teams and very quickly we heard a lot of the hype about our team and over the year you could see the team start to get a little bit more lazy. The coaches would try their best to get us back on track, but ultimately at the end, a lot of our team kind of took a different path. Some people made bad decisions and bad life choices during part of that season, and so on and so forth. And what happened was, when we got to the semi-state game, a team from Jasper came out of really the shadows, if you will. No one was, they weren't really on a lot of people's radar. And the team from Jasper punched us in the face in a way that we have, that I have never been punched before. And we got destroyed in the semi-state game. The reason I bring that up because, is because that for me is something that I was thinking about as I've been looking around at current events and the situation that we face with marriage today. If we look back over the last 30 years or 40 years in our church and in our larger society, we can say that with marriage we got lazy and we are being punched in the face from multiple directions at this point in our life and at this point in the church's history. We're getting punched in the direction of people who would say that you should be able to marry people of the same sex. We're being punched in the face from people who would say that you should be able to marry multiple people at the same time. We're being punched in the face from people who say contraception and sterilization are a God-given or a state-given right. We're being punched in the face from lots of different directions because we got lazy. Now we can sit here and play the blame game, but we can't. It doesn't do any good. Just try and figure out whose fault it was and how it wasn't my fault and how it wasn't so-and-so's fault. We can't play the blame game. What we can do, though, is recognize that while we're losing badly in the fourth quarter, the key for us is to not quit, to take heart, to keep playing, and to fight hard. What made that Jasper game in the semi-state in 1995 even more painful was the fact that we did quit. The coaches will say that it wasn't so much the final score that was so disheartening, it was the fact that many of us let up, rolled over, and play dead. We cannot do that. We are called, and through our baptism, we are called to not quit, to continue to fight, to continue to stick up 
for marriage, to continue to bring the message of the church about the sacrament and the holiness and the dignity of marriage to the larger world, even while they're punching us in the face. The first way to do that is to educate yourself. To educate yourself on what it is that the church teaches and why. For many years, people just said, Father knows the answer. I don't know the answer to a lot of these questions about the church, but Father does, and that's good enough for me. You're not going to find a lot of people out there who are going to be satisfied with you telling them, my priest knows the answer. Vatican II, in a very prophetic way, called to the laity and said, you must step up, you must learn, you must be prophetic because people will be coming to you now. And they are. The question is, do we have the answers? For many, I think a lot of time in the past, the reason that people would often just say, well, Father knows the answer, is because, you know, the answer was in some dusty book down in the basement of the church, and Father had to go down there and read it in Latin and interpret it. But that's not the case anymore. We have the internet. We have sources at our fingertips that can allow us to become educated in a matter of hours on some of the key fundamental issues that face us. As a teacher at Cardinal Ritter High School, even though I had been to the seminary, I wasn't really sure when it came time to teach the issue of homosexuality and what the church says about it. I didn't know a whole lot about it. But after three or four hours of reading and doing research online, I came to understand in a much better way the very beautiful teaching and the very beautiful message that the church has on that subject. One that nobody, outside of those who've looked, actually understands. We are called through the Second Vatican Council and through our baptism to become people who are educated, who are knowledgeable, who can give a defense, as St. Peter says, who can give a defense of why we have hope and why we love and why we enjoy being alive. The other thing that we ought to be doing in order to bring the message, in order to continue to fight, even though it's the fourth quarter and we're losing, is to embrace the the church's teachings, to love it and to live it, and to spread it to other people. Again, no one listens to arguments anymore. They just don't. Pope Paul VI, during the Second Vatican Council, said... People don't listen to teachers, they listen to witnesses. Are you a witness? Are you, if you are married, a witness to the joy, to the, to the beauty of the church's teaching and all of its different aspects about the importance of how to live marriage out? If you're single, are you affirming the importance of marriage in other people? If you are a young person, Are you living in such a way that would show to the world that you think marriage is actually important and worth saving yourself for? We can look at the score and we can be overwhelmed by the fact that we are in a deficit and that we're losing. But what I would like to challenge you to do is to pick three marriages that you know of that you can impact this week. Not through necessarily preaching, but through witness, through affirmation, through bringing them closer to Christ. And finally then, we have an amazing new tool at our disposal, unimaginable to most of the history of Catholics that have come before us, and that is the tool of social media. Do you spread articles and explanations and affirmations of the dignity of marriage and the church's teaching on marriage to your friends and family and those who follow you on social media. We have an amazing capacity to spread the truth and to let people know about the dignity of marriage. 
Marriage is losing by a lot. The church's teaching on marriage is losing by a lot, and it's late in the game. But the good thing about being punched in the face is that at least it wakes us up. It wakes us up and reminds us that we can't take a nap anymore, that we can no longer be lazy, that we can no longer simply say, Father knows or the church knows. It's time to take the message of the church about marriage to the streets, to the people that we know, to the people that we love, and to trust that Christ can heal and can bring back and can work miracles no matter what the score is, no matter how late in the game it may be.